everyone, Jackie Tomlin here, and welcome to another episode of When Spears Speaks Podcast. Uh, welcoming all of your comments and your feedbacks. I greatly appreciate every single one of you. Please feel free to contact me. My website is JackieTomlin.com, or you may reach me via text or phone call at 804-731-2302. So today we're going to talk about a question that I'm asked very often. It's called, I think my child is psychic. Or can you tell me if my child is psychic? Uh, These children are generally known as indigo, star, rainbow, or crystal children. Okay. And it's a question that I'm asked most often. So I'll talk about it today. Um, You know, a child's perspective, they're very fresh. They're very untouched, uh, where nothing is deemed wrong or weird. So they're very open to things. And they may say a whole lot that you don't know what to do with. You know, and one thing that you can do is nurture their spiritual side of them as well as nurturing their physical growth. So today I want to talk about some of the signs that they will carry as uh, being an indigo child and what you can do to nurture them as an adult and how to determine if they are indeed sensitive. Okay. And the first thing I just said there is sensitive. They're going to be highly sensitive to many things and to many emotions. Uh, They do sense different forms of energy and you will find that sometimes they can be a little emotional because of that, okay? They're also very highly aware of other people's feelings and some may carry those famous imaginary friends as well, okay? They may talk to you about an out-of-body experience or what we know as astral projection, That's something that may occur with them as too. Um, And they may share with you some memories from the past. That maybe you view them as an old soul or memories that they shouldn't have. Objectively, you want to examine everything that's going on with them versus suppressing anything that's going on with them. Uh, Some of these cases I have seen where people, these children can actually speak fluently different languages, mainly Spanish or French. Uh, They will often speak about God. They will often speak about angels. Uh, They may even speak to you about people that are past. And sometimes, you know, it's that intuitive. They just, they just know things that they shouldn't know or should not have any knowledge of. Okay. So that's a possibility as well. Another new name I'm finding or I'm hearing more and more lately is a star seed, uh, which would indicate a light worker. And a lot of them will be affiliated in some way or other of working with energy because that's what they're doing. They're reading the energy. And sometimes spirit is speaking through to them through energy. So yeah, going back to an old soul, um, you may describe your child as an old soul, as in they have wisdom that is well beyond their years. They may talk about feeling superior or royalty as how that they feel. And it could be coming from a past life. Now, let me let me say this. Um, sometimes psychics on a whole will say things that are very matter of factly that we don't even realize. Now, for example, about a week ago, I went to dinner with a friend and I stated something that had not occurred yet. Uh, I did not and did not think anything about it because to me it was just that's what I, it's what I saw, it's what I knew. It wasn't any big deal. What I said actually did not occur until two days later. Okay. And this happens often when you're friends with me that I might throw out there something just matter of factly that this is the way I see it and that event has not occurred. You may find that to be the same with a gifted child. You may also find that as a child, they will talk about previous lives or they may say in their past life or in their other life. And it's very matter of fact in the way they have stated that. Okay. These children tend to be highly, highly creative. Um, Arts, crafts, just a creative energy. Um, 
my daughter herself was in second or third grade when she was accepted into a creative arts program, a gifted program over on the other side of Richmond. Um, those creative juices just flow because like I said, as children, they're so untainted. There's no really instilled into them what's right and what's wrong. They're very intuitive and their psychic abilities are just usually tremendous when they're children. Some may be deemed, you might deem them as being introverted. They like spending a lot of time alone. They may spend their time focused on something. These could be gamers. They could spend their time drawing. They may just like enjoy spending their time in their room. But they're also children that are not needy. They don't have to constantly be doing something. They're very content with being alone or very content playing alone. Okay. Um, and it's kind of because they're they're choosing that isolation. It's because they're okay with themselves, but we'll get into that here in a few minutes. Okay. They have a strong calling to make the world a better place. These are usually sticklers for following the rules, doing things in certain patterns. They like routines. They don't like routines to be wavered. Okay. Um, they also have that strong calling to fix people. If they find someone sad, they want to cheer them up. If they find someone's in need, they want to fix that. They are definitely, definitely the fixers of the world. And they will carry that over into adulthood. Okay. They also carry what I'm going to call is like a deep knowledge for doing things better or having a better way of doing things. Uh, so if you're struggling with doing something, you know, call upon your gifted child because they'll see things differently and can maybe help you with a different scenario. They are generally non-responsive to authority figures or controlling people. Not disobedient, just non-responsive. They're not intimidated easily. Okay. And because of that, often people are intimidated by them. There is a love, an absolute love and a passion for nature, plants, and animals, okay? And, you know, they are just on the beginning of their spiritual journey, just the beginning of it, okay? Um, later in life, going into adulthood, what you can look for. There's going to be countless benefits, countless benefits that gifted children have that they're going to carry into adulthood. Now, don't get me wrong. This is not an easy path for them. OK, and I say this because I myself came out of a very, very religious home and what did, was deemed as my normal was not deemed as normal to my family. I'm also very grateful that I come in an era that they did not just up and medicate children. Okay. So very, very much a blessing there. So let me tell you how they're going to handle things in adulthood. Okay. Okay. There's going to be a strong sense of inner peace. And because of that strong sense of inner peace, they may be deemed as someone that doesn't care. Or someone that's not focused and that's not it. They just, they know where to apply their energy. They know what is worth stressing about. They know what is not worth stressing about. Okay. And they're going to have true happiness. The ultimate happiness. It's not just being happier for a day. It's not just this made them happy. It is true happiness because ultimately they're optimists. And they're optimists because they know how to handle stress. They're very much one, what I would describe as feeling at one with themselves. Okay. In other words, they, they understand themselves and they may reach a point that they really don't care if you understand them or not. They're at one with themselves. There is an unconditional love for all living beings, good, bad, or ugly. It's just there. It's going to be part of them. It is finding their true self and their true path. And this is a quest that will probably never end. 
never end. I myself will tell you, I don't, I, I still don't know what, what I want to be when I grow up. Have I found my true path? I don't think I have. Okay. They also can embrace their worry, stress, and anxiety are natural facts of life. Okay. Does it mean that they'll never have worry, stress, or anxiety? And some will even, even suffer from depression. They are human as you are. But there is a deep healing of the body, mind, and soul. And there's a deep understanding of body, mind, and soul. And that how those all have to work together in a circle to complete them. Okay. A lot of these will pick up energy work or become energy workers or what they call the star seeds or the light workers. Okay. I highly encourage Reiki or any type of energy work. They have a higher shift of consciousness and understanding than what you can probably understand yourself. And they know how to raise their vibration. They know how to raise their vibration. They know how to raise the vibration of others. They know how to raise the vibration of their atmosphere. And they also know into young adulthood, the spirit's going to speak to them in many forms and in many different ways and in countless ways. And this is also part of their spiritual upbringing that you can talk to them is make sure they have that relationship with spirit and make sure they understand the spirit can speak to you, anyone. Okay. I'm a big person that I, I do adamantly believe that the majority of people carry some type of ability that is suppressed and it comes suppressed as you age. Okay. And I want you, if you have even suspect you have a, a psychic child or not, you know, give them that gift to spirit, encourage it. Now, the things that I'm asked, and we're running a little bit sh uh, short on time for recording today, long story, we won't get into that. Um, but I want to talk to you for the remaining of the show of how to encourage and empower your gifted child, okay? And, and what you can do to really help and encourage this. Now, I am not a medical doctor by any sense of the word. These children are often tested for ADHD, autism, um, Asperger's, things of that nature, any kind of behavioral problem. They're often tested for and it's due to disciplinary problems and outbursts. So I do encourage you to at least write down and objectively look at some of the things I discussed today before jumping to that conclusion, before allowing a doctor to place them on medication, or to see that if it's something that can be worked through or something that maybe you need to raise your consciousness of and have a better understanding of them and what's going on with them, I am in no way Am I telling you don't discipline your child? All children need discipline. But if you do have a gifted child, there are some things you can do to help encourage that growth and empower them. Okay. And let's start with breathing techniques. Let's start with some meditation, perhaps some yoga, energy work. They're going to find this appealing. They really will. Uh, smudging. If you're not familiar with that, you can Google it. Uh, smudging they find to be fun. My granddaughter loves smudging. She thinks it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's how to stay grounded and talk to them about their visualization. Okay. Because at some time as a gifted child, there will be a, some kind of a spiritual attack. Um, whether it's at a young age whether it says a young adult or into their adulthood and talk to them about surrounding themselves by the light or placing that protective bubble around them, you know, do different things to do with visualization. And you will be surprised if you visit your local library, how many books for children you will find on these topics. Okay. But how to shield themselves, how to protect themselves uh, is also important. 
Now, the other thing I've noticed that comes with the gifted children from myself, my daughter to my granddaughter, there is excess energy involved. Okay. Um, get them involved outdoors. It's not just running around and burning off their energy. It's grounding, you know, it's the feet on the ground. It's releasing energy by that form. And it's still working with energy. Uh, most gifted children will love nature, nature trails, nature walks, anything you can do like that. And if you really want to take this to another level, then bring nature indoors. Uh, herb gardens are a big hit. Regrowing their food. Things like this. This is something that they are very interested in because they're growing on that spiritual journey. And like I said, there is a direct connect with nature and watching nature grow. Okay. Uh, a quiet room or a space to research, recharge. Now, I know a lot of you don't have just that extra room in your house. But if you don't have an extra room that you can make like your meditation or your, your Zen room or something, if you can't set that up, then designate a corner in their room. Make them a reading corner. Make them a corner they can nap in. And then make this a corner where they can uh, do their creative arts. Or, you know, if they're a fan of crystals. I'm a crystal collector. Jacelyn has learned her crystals. She loves crystals. Uh, she has some of her own. You know, give them somewhere where they can have their space, their me time. And teach them what their me time is and how important that is. They need to learn that at a very, very young age. And you know what? You as an adult may learn the same thing. Their baths, the spiritual cleansing baths, salt, sea salt baths, things like that. These are things that they're going to gravitate to uh, because they're connecting with that element of water. Make it fun. Make it fun, you know. Uh, it doesn't have to be the holistic route, but they're really going to be geared towards the holistic, the holistic route. Um, like my daughter's house, the fresh eucalyptus in the shower, things like that. You're going to find that children just gravitate towards this. Um, you also really want to drive into them with everything out there as far as their snacks and things like that, you need, need to really drive home to them the importance of drinking water. Water is going to be significant because water, I mean, one is your dehydration and we're 80% water. They need to know that. But it's also the cleansing of toxins and negativity. And it helps them with their grounding and centering. They really need to know and have an understanding of the importance of water. Um, now, this is going to help you in, in your parenting as well. You know, explain to them the importance of their clean environment. Uh, how the declutter affects their energy and affects their energy fields. Um, encouraging that things are decluttered and that things are put away. And, you know, once things are clean and decluttered, talk to them about the feng shui. I cannot think of a kid that I don't know that is not about feng shui. You know, the placement of metal objects, the placement of wooden objects, crystal shopping together, dream catchers. Children are very big into this and particularly your gifted children, they're just not going to get enough of it, okay? The same way with the creativity, um, from drawing to water paints to whatever, even down to diamond painting, they're just not going to get enough of it. And they need to understand that their own space, their own meditation space, their own clean, cleansing space. And if you, let's say you are a gifted mother let's say you're a gifted mother and you have a gifted child if you have that extra room make it a zen room make it the time of peace and quiet the time to relax the time to do your meditation the time to do your yoga the me time and it's something y'all could do together okay i highly encourage any kind of reiki healing teaching them the chakras 
teaching them how to align their chakras, teaching them to work with Reiki, teaching them to work with crystals. There's other things you can do. Um, some aromatherapy or teaching them how to make essential oils, um, candle making, anything that y'all could do together and connect and bond, but to kind of let them know that you get them or that you understand them, it's going to be big. Like I said, nature trails, nature walks. Do you have a rock shop? Take them to the rock shop. These are things that these children are going to enjoy and indirectly you're empowering them and you're empowering them um, as their growth, their spiritual growth and as their gifts. But above all, let's talk about when spirit speaks. Okay. Spirit speaks to children the same way it speaks to adults. Um, it comes in many forms, many shapes. Let them talk to you about it. If spirit has spoke to them, sit down, stop what you're doing and listen. When they say they saw an angel in their dream, listen and be open-minded to it. Like I said, they're going to have many, 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 many heightened experiences, wonderful experiences, and experiences that they want to share. But overall, they're experiences that need to be heard. Compile the list of these things. Compile a list of what you can do. Compile a list of what you see in your child. And decide if your child, I'm not going to say don't take them to a doctor, don't take them to a therapist. But you take that list to the therapist, to them, and talk to them about that as well. Because like I said, what you'll find is that, that you know, and the, what is the answer to, I think my child is psychic or Jackie is my child psychic. The only one that's going to determine that is going to be you. Uh, some medical professionals are open enough to determine that as well. Okay, so it's all in perception, how it's perceived and how it's handled. I hope this podcast has helped you out today. I appreciate your feedback. A lot of the shows are done on topics that you send to me, topics you want to hear me talk about. I love each and every one of you. I thank you for listening. I thank you for your support. And again, if you want to contact me directly, please do so, do so through my website. It is JackieTomlin.com. Also, if you care to join me on social media, I do videos daily on YouTube. So look me up over there. But please find those links directly on my website as people are spinning off profiles on media that are actually not me. All of my medias will come from my Facebook page as well as my website. Thank you, guys. You have a fantastic week ahead. I will see you again next week. Have a good one. Bye.